Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us in our backstage chat room where we find out all the goods about what happened here. My name is Joel Ivney. I'm the artistic director of Against the Grain Theatre. Thank you for joining us for an experiment to test something that we have never done before and that does not happen without its glitches, without its nerves, without its excitement. Um, this is something that we thought we'd try. It's an experiment where we have never done anything like this. Uh, a kind of web mini series experiment um, where we were working with incredible people and stuff like that. And so thank you for joining us and giving it a try. I'm here backstage with some of the cast from A Little Too Cozy, our prequel. And if you have any questions, please send them to our comments section and we will try to answer them with them. But I have two of the performers from that little weird, beautiful Web Besode and Yanel Sills and Midori Marsh. There's Yanel. Hi, Yanel. Hi, Midori. Hey, what's up? Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Good. Aren't you Good. feeling? Aren't you feeling the love? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So much love. <laughs> so much love. How was? How was it? Kind of like seeing yourself on camera on on stage in a different way, so to speak. Fun. You go yeah, first. To be there. honest, I got kind of nervous. <laughs> yeah, I was feeling like regular about to go on stage nervousness even though i'm sitting in my bedroom yeah <laughs> in my comfies yeah i don't know it was fun plus it gave me some adrenaline to like cook yeah. dinner after this fun the energy well you know i have a question for you yes and i want to say how is this experience of making like a pilot for a webisode different from singing i'm sure it's pretty clear and like one thing that we didn't really address which kind of like if this series develops more, there would probably be some elements where you guys are singing part of Cozy Fan Tutte or our trans adaptation. But how was this experience different from singing in an opera? Oh, so, so different. Well, I mean, the process of learning music is its own journey. So like that was kind of taken out and I had the time to like look at the text a little bit more because anybody who sings Mozart know that it takes a lot of focus and a lot of energy to do so. Um, so it's kind of nice to go into the drama, which can sometimes be um, kind of pushed to the side as you're trying to sound beautiful. <laughs> um, you know, our hopes and our dreams is to, you know, like focus on text and sound beautiful, but sometimes real life doesn't allow that to happen. And you'd rather sound beautiful than be interesting. <laughs> but it was nice to, um, it was nice to just like kind of put, like the music to the side, but still use that inspiration to give um, the text life. So it was really cool. Yeah. Well, Justine's watching. She said she she's definitely hashtag Team Felicity. So Woo, team Felicity. One <laughs> <laughs> um, what stood out to you in terms of how this process was a little bit different? And again, it's not like we're producing TV yet, mm -hmm. but like, how is this what stood out to you in terms of how it was different? Obviously, this was also made during COVID times, which is altogether just weird. But in terms yeah. of the artistic side, um, what stood out in terms of the differences? Um, well, working with a, like a film crew, I've never done that in like that are so like close to you and like, you know, zooming in on my phone and like, like those little details. Um, so that was just like a different thing in terms of like how I focus and not like look at not look into the camera or not like be distracted about like certain things so that was something different and pretty exciting um because usually in my my experience you're like on a stage or in like a concert setting and they're over there and we're over here but it's like right up in your face covid <laughs> safe of course everyone was wearing masks around me but you know it's so different yeah amazing yes absolutely oh look at that simona Hey, uh, bravo, so much fun. Cool, very cool. Um, Midori, I've got a question for you. Midori, Here there go. you are, a little transition, <laughs> a little swim. You were playing Despina and singing Despina is so much fun. Um, this is a little bit different because it was a different situation. So how is Despina and A Little Too Cozy different from the traditional opera, would you say? Hmm. Well, I love that her um, sort of thread of attitude runs through whatever adaptation she's working in. Um, I think in the 
Mozart in the original, she has to be maybe a little bit more coy with how much she's actually running the show. And in this adaptation, she's literally running the show. So it's like, she doesn't have to pretend that she's not doing that. Um, you know, maybe throw a little subtlety out the window, which I like, hmm. I think that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, did, did you kind of feel like you had the freedom to kind of, other than the name, like it was in the text, but like, was it really Despina or was it kind of Midori interpreting who this character is? Definitely a combo, always a combo, right? Like, can you really leave yourself at the door when you, you know, go to play a character? Um, I'm sure everybody who's like performed, whatever you do, you know, high school theater or movies or anything, like you always have a little bit of yourself in there. Um, yeah, I feel like, Despina and I are definitely different. So it was really, really fun being her because she really seems like she has her shit together. And I'm like, hmm, I could use a little bit of that. You know, she gives me the vibes of somebody who is just like so immaculate at work, keeping everything going. And then she goes home and eats like tuna out of a can for dinner. Um, yeah, so I can relate to that a little bit. I think Despina could use some more work and home life balance. There we go. Cool. Well, the team that captured this, and again, um, we, we have joined in this per, in this interwebs series of events. Um, Stephen Bell, the founder of Coffee Shop Creative, who owns this team. Hey, Stephen, how are you? Hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> Good. The the nerves of watching something, and again, the first time ATG of doing this. There's glitches, which again, you and I will <laughs> will have talks afterwards about everything that didn't go right, but. I think a huge kudos to how we pulled this off, which was kind of amazing. Um, how, like, how, how would you describe the experience of taking something which you know well as a as a singer as well um, of Mozart and putting it into this format, this bite sized kind of ten minute thing? How how did you feel about it and approach it, sort of um, from your side, which again kind of created this from the production side. Uh, I'd say that uh, from the beginning, we kind of had the idea of creating something like uh, The Office that you were uh, kind of suggesting at first, that kind of idea of making uh, a story work both on the interview side as well as in a narrative side too. And I think we really did a great job in working with some fantastic singers who, you know, we don't give enough credit to singers out there as actors because in this case in film, it is a completely different realm than doing something on a stage. Uh, there, the nuance of, of facial gestures and the small is amplified tenfold that we often don't get when we're watching an audience. So having a chance to work with you know, a talented director like yourself and an amazing cast, it was so exciting to see what we could create for a first time pilots and uh, for how we could uh, tell this awesome story that I remember seeing back at the CBC studio a couple of years ago, I'm really enjoying. So it was a really fun process and huge shout out to Eric Moniz, my shooting partner. He did a wonderful job capturing both uh, sound and audio. And this is COVID times. We didn't have a sound person with us. So we're basically doing, you know, uh, jacks of all trades and being able to do both the sound and video at the same time. So uh, a huge, big uh, round of applause to Eric as well as Margarita. It was our uh, AD on the day. Uh, she was fantastic and being able to, you know, organize everything, slating, having the cast ready to go, setting up the scene, checking levels. Like it was a really, an awesome experience working with a dedicated team. Well, this is hopefully the beginning. And again, if anyone's seen what ATG has kind of done over the last six months, our production value has been, a I don't want to say low, but again, we've kind of gone through the survival phase where we're now into like more of a planning phase and just going from iPhones in people's living rooms, which was really awesome for what we did. You brought this game to a whole new level and we're really excited to see where it can go. I'm going to come back to you, Stephen, in just a second. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Rehab Shyab. Um, hello, Rehab. How are you? You're, 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 there you are. Look at that. How's it going? I'm mute. Oh, I'm good. How are you? Good. You've kind of, 
not only have you probably sung in Cozy Fan Tutte, but you've actually sung in A Little Too Cozy, the opera that we did oh, in yeah. Toronto in the CBC building. Yeah. Um, we have some pictures from the Banff version as well, which we may bring up. But when we did it, we were actually in Studio 42 at the CBC. And how is this little prequel, how did that feel to kind of set up how we did this um, back in 2016, almost four years ago? I know. Well, this is, I mean, what we did, what we did right now is so, I mean, very different, but I think this is what we'd have, what people would have expected uh, coming before the show, right in 2016. So I think it's such an ingenious idea and you, and against the grain and you have always had these ideas to kind of get out of the comfort zone of what we think about opera, you know, and I, I always have respected that and I'm always, you know, kind of in to do that because it's I don't know it's just it's really fun and it makes people think about different ways how we can approach opera well and that's kind of it it's kind of when it's and and I would argue and I'm sure people would argue with me but like what we just showed was kind of interpreted as opera because inspired by it and as I kind of was saying like that if we kept doing these and and that would be the hope is that we yeah. could start introducing the singing mixed in with your your beautiful acting and talent and the cast <laughs> that we had. And it's kind of like in these bite size, it's kind of just, you know, I don't know how percentage wise, 10 minutes is like 6% uh, of the entire opera. So it's a lot more digestible. Yeah. yeah, it is, but it's, it's cause now like, you know, most of my friends who don't know about the opera Cozy Fantute, they're like, oh, what is this about? Like, is this like a, a TV reality show. I'm like, yes, it is, but it's it's based on Cosi Fan Tutte, and it's an opportunity for me to explain them what is Cosi Fan Tutte, and this crazy guy named Mozart, <laughs> who kind of came up with a very very crazy idea, of not so far from a little too cozy, really. And I think against the grain, doing these little clips is like mini series could eventually really tie in quite nicely to an actual little too cozy. If you guys are going to be doing it again, then it could be a part of the part of the experience, I think, as a, an audience member where before you even get to the theater, you've already invested in the team, Team Dora, Team Felicity, Team, you know, whatever. And then when you come into the show, you can see uh, a bit like the, the videos, the, pre the preparation videos, and then in the show, um, then for the intermission, you have other videos. So it's kind of, you're like really, you're kind of taking us into a voyage to a, in a journey from beginning to end, from, from selection process to the end of the finale. You know, so I think it's really ingenious. It's amazing, and it's it could be an interesting thing to see how this these web series gonna develop. You know, like do we kind of give everything right away, like the 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 whole punch, or do we kind of just little give bits by bits, or you know, I think it's an it's an interesting idea, especially if you're gonna do a, a little too cozy, eventually, like in a in a very soon. <laughs> soon future, um, hmm. to kind of prepare for it, prepare your audience as a cool, really cool marketing idea. It's, it's amazing. And I think we should do all of the Da Ponte um, Mozarts, the, the, the Ponte, the trilogy like that. I agree, it's fun. And you can really flesh out the backstories that way and sort of fill in the blanks a little bit more. Because you really can, I mean, if you think about also Don Giovanni, you can definitely put it as a TV reality show. I mean, it is a TV reality show, you know? so. I think it would be a great idea for ATG. Well, thank you. I'm going to go back to Yanel. It's This is fun. It's kind of like bringing in different people. Hey, Yanel. Hey, hey, Yanel and <laughs> Rehab. I don't know if you've acted or sung together before, but now you have in a weird way. It's yeah. kind of beautiful. I did love, by the way, they're like, oh, I like her. She's like a sister, me, sister to me. That was right. a nice hint. Right? <laughs> Little touches. Little touch. Yeah. Okay, well, Yanel, a question. So you saw this, what we did. Yeah. Could you see opera, could you see more opera being made this way in this kind of, is this a, a weird thing that ATG just did or could you <laughs> envision more possibilities? Oh yeah, definitely more possibilities. I don't think it's, it's just maybe it's never been done before. So maybe to some people it could be seen as like weird or, or different, but I think it definitely, um, makes people do a little bit more work with their creativity and not just, you know, sink into tradition, which COVID has like torn apart. <laughs> you know, it's like we, if we're not creative and if we're not thinking, then we won't be able to create the art that we want to 
uh, keep alive and for the potential to make new art. So I think it's good. And like ATG is doing a good job of like really challenging other people because then like your colleagues and other companies will be like, okay, I guess we can't just do the same old, same old because it's, it's received really well over there. So why don't we do it too? That's why everyone does Bohem like a thousand times because they know that people will like it. So if, if they see something different then and they see that old oh, people like this, then it kind of challenges other people what I think art should be, you know, challenging each other and keeping us accountable. So, woo. Woohoo. Good answer. Team Felicity. Love that. <laughs> um, Steven, I'm going to, I'm going to bring you back as well. Look at this kind of like <laughs> musical chairs of guests. Bye. I love it. Right. <laughs> hey, Mel, how are you? Good. <laughs> nice to see you. You too. Um, you're an opera singer as well, Stephen, as well as a production person. What operas would you love to see turned into a mini series like this? If, if, we, if, if we could be on HBO, if we could be on Netflix, um, what what series? Again, we're watching the um, the house on on a Bly, the haunting of Bly House, which is based on the turn of the screw. So, what operas could make into a wonderful mini series? Do you think? Ooh, um, well, I'd love the. Uh, Onyegin by Tchaikovsky. Uh, I think that as a period piece would make a, a fantastic uh, series, especially in the cinematic realm. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, Nixon and China, uh, some of the newer operas there. Um, uh, Verdi, Puccini, I mean, you could go with Bohem and you could do a whole narrative series on that too. So uh, definitely it'd be amazing to see what in this new realm of cinematic and arts uh, that we have. I mean, if we could do more uh storytelling on these traditionally loved operas it would be amazing to see what kind of work could be created nina who just brought that up um i could also see new works being developed specifically for an online environment there could be a role in the audience deciding the story and that's kind of exactly it which um as soon as you can start nina interacting with that mm -hmm. digital space that's what we're trying to figure out and kind of see how that can play a role in in an opera's development which as soon as you can combine the film and tech technological aspects which steven you brought to this project that um you're seeing some of them on um netflix where it's kind of like you can choose kind of like choose your own adventure where it goes and you get to play a role in how that's how the story goes yeah i i think also too like capturing a certain kind of uh theme to uh, an era like I, I'm sure the viewers know that the Queen's Gambit that's currently running on Netflix is such a wonderfully done series and it really captures that time frame really well so maybe something that was like audience interactive that specifically shoots in a certain period with maybe being able to only interact with the elements of that time maybe a cool idea for having a chance to do a production that way as well there we go love that good um Midori I'm going to bring back Midori <laughs> nice Little hi Little little uh, tag team in from Steven, <laughs> a little, little of that, a little movie stuff. Um, Midori, you're in training in this COVID era at the Canadian Opera Company in the ensemble program. And not to talk about what that's like, which I'm sure is unique and different <laughs> unto itself, but after doing something like this, do you think film, film screen work, especially with the last eight months, would be a good part of an opera singer's training going forward? Well, I was fully living my CW like fantasy. I was just like, oh, look, day on set. Oh, like I was having the best time. So, I mean, I'm biased, but I would love to have uh, more of this sort of rolled into what we learn how to do. Um, I think looking at um, like musical theater, for example, a lot of people who start on Broadway um, make their way into television um, at some point. You know, whether that's smaller roles or larger larger starring roles, like, you know, if you catch a big break, I think um, that versatility is something that uh, more young opera artists could really use and are bringing to the table now already. You know, it doesn't have to be like, can you act on camera? Could you be in a television show? But I'm seeing so many artists bring their unique perspective, their unique skills and talents to opera, which is so exciting. Um, but yeah, I think we could definitely use a little bit more of this, especially even with stuff like um, Live from the Met. You know, there are clearly singers who you watch 
who are so engaging and so ready to kind of be captured up close. Um, and it adds like this whole other level to an experience like that, like live at the Met, which honestly sometimes I've enjoyed more than, or, you know, not more, but I've, I've enjoyed in a different way than seeing something live just because you can get up close and personal and you're like, you know, practically staring up this singer's nostrils and you're just like, you know, getting really in close to their emotions. Um, and then there are singers who are obviously not as ready to be seen up close like that. And that's okay. Like we're always going to keep the live element because live performance is just so exciting. But I think we could definitely roll some more of this into what we do and what we learn about. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And uh, we should be doing more of that. Um, and to talk a little bit of that as well, Rehab Shyab tag team in with Despina, <laughs> Team Dora. Where are you, Ooh, Rehab? Yeah. Are you still there? Oh, with audio only. Th that's okay. Oh, there she is. Oh, there it is. Uh, rehab, it's kind of like, you, that's what's kind of unique about this is kind of like when you're living in a screen and, and doing it that way. Um, is this a new way that that you would love to add to your resume of, of projects, like doing opera, but also doing these kind of incredible video projects as well. Oh, are you on mute or no? There you go. Sorry, I thought I need to mute myself in between, you know? So <laughs> um, this is a very interesting question because I think, I think this new way, this new COVID way, this new videography way of, presenting art is very interesting. It was always there, but now because of COVID, we are more aware of it, right? And I think we should embrace it. It should never replace the real deal for me. And that's just really personal. It should never replace it, but it should enhance as like, um, like a, just an extra, like a plus one, like a, just a, a nice bonus to the, the art form. But I, I don't think it should, it should replace live art performance and live opera. I think it's, um, we should do both. We should definitely do both. And and now this is the second project that I'm doing with ATG in the past few weeks. And that involves a lot of video. And it's also making me think about, wait, wow, this is actually really cool. Like I've never really had the chance to do a project like this and um, our Messiah as well. So it's kind of like awaken a nice little like a nice creativity beast inside of me that I'm like, I want to see where this goes. I will, but yet I don't ever want to stop singing for a live audience. So I think there's, um, there's just many ways to be an artist these days, you know, and not these days, I like guess forever. There was a good singer was just never just a good singer. He was also a good painter, a good, a good um, uh, poet, you know, and I feel now is the time to really broaden our, our horizon of what can we do? What, how not only what are we good at but what we like to do you know and though so this way of, of reaching people is very new and for a few months at the beginning I was very kind of against it and and trying really hard to be like no I want to do opera I want to do yeah. live performances but now that I've kind of had the taste of it I'm like oh this is actually really cool like it doesn't have to be one like either or right it could be both and yeah, I want to taste everything. And that's the kind of thing. If if <laughs> there you go, that's the quote <laughs> for social media afterwards. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but as you kind of said, like some some TV actors or Hollywood actors, they also go on Broadway and do plays, and they they want to enhance that experience with yeah with the live versus the produced. And you know, I feel that opera's kind of being a little bit behind in that kind of produced element, and it's great that there's now this time where we can do this and like full full on saying that you know our projects now couldn't wouldn't have happened had covid not ha happened so and yeah you don't want to say there's yeah this is good that we did and it was wonderful that we were able to all kind of safely meet together and do this um but again hopefully other companies around north america and the world will also yes like you said do the live but also enhance and do something else yeah, and I, you know, today I just finished a um, a really cool podcast uh, by Tim Ferriss, and his um, his guest was uh, Hugh Jackman, and so Hugh Jackman was before even being known as an actor, he was known as a musical theater, and 
and he dabbled uh, a music musical theater singer. And there is a one point in his interview where he he realized like, oh my god, like I'm labeled as a singer, but yet I'm an actor. And but he had to come to the realization: why can't I do both? Why are people so good at labeling? You know, oh, you're an actress, and oh, you're a singer, and oh, you're a musical singer, you're a mezzo, you're a soprano, you're a tvishin, whatever. You know, so he just realized like I need to do both. And that's when really his career kind of took off when he embraced both things, both things. And I think you're right, companies now, and there's a few companies, like let's, you know, not everyone, but some some really cool and not innovative companies are doing stuff like against the green, not quite as, you know, like as avant-garde, I would say, but um, I think I'm, I'm really hopeful and, and things, of course, things need to change and COVID was a horrible thing, but it did, it was a wake up call for everyone. And especially for this art form that's not dying, but that needs a little like facelift. There you go, exactly. <laughs> team Dora, hashtag Team Dora. Hashtag Team Dora. Well, I wanna bring everyone back in um, because thank you so much Midori for participating in this project and rehab and Yanel, and is there even a fifth? There it is, Stephen as well. So okay. it was kind of good. I do want to do a shout out to, uh, for those who are still listening, Kevin Lau, great composer. He underscored this whole film, this whole web series. So you'll have to come back to watch it again because <laughs> that wasn't necessarily there. And so that's part of this fun, glitchy world that um, that I own and take was a mistake, but hey, if you loved it, you're going to love it even more because he wrote beautiful underscoring music for this whole website, uh, episode as well. So thank you for, for joining us for that. And um, really good seeing you, even virtually. And now I can watch this all the time if I ever want to see your faces again. But um, thank you so much for doing this. It was so much fun. Thank thank you. You. Thanks, guys. It was fun. <laughs> Anytime. And for everyone who was tuning in, thank you for tuning in, for giving this a try again. Um, 10 minutes went by quick, so you can watch it like 10 times easily to get your fix. Um, ATG has been busy. We've tried to you know, keep moving forward, giving hope for a lot of different people. And we just want to preview a couple projects coming up in the next few weeks about how you can tune in. Big, big thing for us is like, do we charge? Do we not? And in the industry that's being talked about now, but with the holidays coming up, we were like, we have to give this as a gift to people because times are tough. It's getting cold and we want to share that with you all. So here is a little preview of what we have coming up. Next, there it is coming up from Against the Grand Theater. This project is in response to how everything kind of changed. We wanted to share something with everyone and work on something that could challenge us, motivate us, and ultimately give hope for all of us as well. One of the things that's been quite wonderful about this partnership is how easy it's been to come together. There's a, there's a lot of interest in, in finding ways that we can reinvent these kinds of works. And Handel's Messiah is uh, such a fantastic opportunity for us to look at it with, with a new lens. There's something in Handel's music that, especially in times that are very trying, has this comforting and optimistic and supportive quality. He really brings all human emotion um, into his music. That's what art does, to bring the human emotion and human condition to the forefront. So there you have it, two projects coming up, one of them, um, our interpretation of Handel's Messiah called Messiah Complex, a 70 minute film featuring artists from every province and territory across our great land. You'll want to tune in December 13th to see that. It features the Toronto Symphony Orchestra, as well as an incredible group of soloists and choirs still being made and filmed during COVID times. That's a documentary unto itself. And then in a couple of weeks, or next week, I chat to Barbara Hannigan, an incredible Canadian soprano and conductor. So you'll want to check in 8 p.m. November 26th for that. Thank you so much for watching tonight and we'll see you next time on ATG TV. Thank you.